All right, so welcome to video two of how to use the inventory cost and pricing spreadsheet for high volume makers or batch sellers of handmade goods. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the initial setup of your spreadsheet. It's pretty quick and easy. I'm starting with a totally blank copy of the spreadsheet. This is what one of the inventory tabs looks like. You can open up your spreadsheet and work alongside me if you would like. So first things first, we're just going to organize our three inventory tabs here. These green tabs are for your finished goods inventory and you can rename them to whatever you want. Now each tab can actually handle an unlimited amount of finished goods entered on this tab. Um, but I do recommend that you try to keep it within like 5,000 or less per tab just to keep the spreadsheet from running too slow. So you've got three inventory tabs here. If you have more than three categories of finished goods inventory, you still want to just break them up into these three tabs. You don't want to make new tabs. If you do, that info is not going to travel to this gear tab where your tax totals are calculated. So try to break them up into just these three tabs and you can rename them to be whatever categories you want. So let's say that I make handmade clothes and I make shirts and blouses and dresses and leggings and skirts, etc. So I might decide that I'm going to rename these tabs. So I might decide that I'm going to rename these tabs to tops, bottoms, and dresses. So to rename them, there's a couple different things you can do. You can double click on it and actually rename it, or you can right click on it and go to rename. If you're using spreadsheet software other than Excel, it might not look exactly like this. You might even see your tab names going across the top. That's totally fine. You should still be able to rename them. So I've renamed my green inventory tabs. I might also do that here um, where it's written at top at the where the header is. So if you want to rename that cell too, you can. I might rename it like that. Um, all you have to do is click the middle cell in column F to rename it. You can put whatever you need up here and that's how you would rename these guys. You can always change these as the use of your spreadsheet continues. All right, our next step is to do something similar, but for your raw materials and supplies tabs. So these tabs here are where you're gonna be entering the raw materials and supplies that go into your finished goods. If you didn't already know this, the materials that go into your finished good inventory that you create and sell are also considered inventory themselves. So in my example, this is where I would enter things like fabric, elastic, zippers, interfacing, buttons, snaps, whatever goes into the finished clothes that I am making and selling. So you can organize these the same way, rename them to meet your needs. Remember, you can double click or you can right click and hit rename. And then you can also rename the cell up here and cell A1 to match whatever you're entering on this tab. So you've got 10 materials tabs here. And if you end up with more than 10 categories, again, I really suggest that you try to stick with 10 to keep the spreadsheet from becoming too slow and too bulky. I will cover how to filter and sort so that you can easily organize and find materials in a later video. And I also want to point out that whenever you rename this cell up here, the gray cell in the upper left hand corner, those updated names are going to travel over to your cost of goods made tab. So you can see like this column is now renamed as fabric to tie to this. So as you rename the material tab cell up here, it's going to update on your cost of goods made column header. If 
Finally, the only other thing you really need to do to update your spreadsheet is go to the year tab and make sure that your year here is whatever year you're, you're working with right now on this spreadsheet. So if you're doing this for a prior year to get ready for taxes, you might want to change this to 2017. If you are watching this video in the future, you might need to rename this to 2019. It's not really going to affect anything on your spreadsheet. But just so that you don't get confused, you're welcome to rename these years if you need to.